Mm. Good morning. All right, it's 9.34 a.m. I'm headed into the office, and man, when I tell you, let's see what happens. I'm going to pull away because, okay, hopefully it will hang in there. All right, let's see. We're having a lot of time. Okay, hopefully it will remain steady. There are technical difficulties this morning. Good morning. <laughs> My apologies. But the, the live disconnected like 10 times before I pulled out of the driveway. Mm. So good morning to you. All right, 9.34 a.m. Uh, on Friday morning. And this is going to be a long day. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get mentally and physically prepared to have a very long day full of clients. Um, something that's happening in my practice is I am no longer taking health insurance for mental health uh, counseling appointments. And so all of my clients who have health insurance are trying to squeeze in a session or two between now and the 31st. Because as of February 1st, I am a direct pay practice only. Um, and as excited as I am for that, it is also incredibly scary because there is like no net. <laughs> There's no net, right? It's up to me to market my practice and to keep my practice full and, to, you know, collect my payments. And yeah, it's a little scary. But as I like to say, I jump off of cliffs daily. Like I am a risk taker. And so... That kind of fits who I am and how I move in the world. Um, I like taking risks. I believe that people who take risks have huge rewards. So I, I'm a huge reward person. Okay, I like to get a, little, a whole lot. And so that means a whole lot is required. Okay, so this morning, very quickly, I wanted to talk about something that a coaching client and I were talking about yesterday. They brought to my attention and... Um, it was about personal hygiene. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to I'm going to do a live on this. And it's probably not going to be very long, but I'm going to talk about it. And personal hygiene is one of those conversations. I actually consider it a hard conversation. That is a very hard conversation to have when you are dating someone or in a relationship with someone. However, it is one of those conversations that does need to be had once, maybe twice, maybe more than that, we have to be willing to let people know when we're turned off, when um, their personal hygiene is not great, and that is a part of what's turning us off. Because I'm going to be frank, like I can't get close to a person whose breath smells bad. I can't get close to a person whose body odor smells bad. Like I don't want to kiss that person. I don't want to snuggle up with that person. I don't want to be close to that person. I don't want to be physically intimate with that person. So this is a hard conversation. And remember, hard conversations make for easy relationships. You want your relationship to be easy? You got to have hard conversations. And to me, if you're dating someone or in a relationship and you don't feel like you can have a hard conversation, that's a big sign that this relationship is not for you. If you say to me, oh, I can't talk to them about that. I can't say that. Okay, you know, you don't have no business being with this person. Like to me, that is the most obvious reason that you and this person are not good for each other. You're not a good fit. And whether that is because that person doesn't make you feel safe enough to say that whether it's you holding back, like, oh, I just, you know, I don't want to talk about stuff like that. I don't want to deal with stuff like that. Okay, but either way, you don't have no business being with this person, and they don't have no business being with you. Because I'm going to be real with y'all. Whoever I end up with, married to, I, I'm, I'm spilling my guts, okay, appropriately, right? I'm not saying everything that jumps into my mind, but I'm not scared to say what jumps into my mind, no. I'm not going to be with someone that I'm scared to talk to or I can't talk to. No, no. Mm -mm. So let me get back to the topic at hand, personal hygiene. Some of this is going to be for men and women. Okay. And then I'm going to talk about some things specifically for women because I happen to be one and I like to keep my personal hygiene right and tight. Okay. Good morning. Um, so, 
but I'm going to start off with the things that can apply to a man or a woman. Okay? So, I want you to bathe yourself, whether you take a bath, whether you take a shower, but you need to be bathing yourself and the, and the, the regions of your body that, that get kind of stinky, you know, you need to be bathing daily, okay? Every day, you should be bathing yourself. You should be showering or bathing yourself. Um, there are all kinds of wonderful products. I mean, my favorite soap in the whole world is Dove. I've been using that for almost 50 years. And I love Dove soap. I love the way it smells. I love how it treats my skin. I love, love, love it. But find something that is going to tackle what you got going on. Okay? And that might be different for a man versus a woman. But you should have soap hitting your body, water hitting your body, warm water and soap hitting your body and hitting those regions of your body daily okay, to your skin, all right, you should be washing every day. Seems elementary, but for some people, mm -mm, they, they just, I don't know, they missed that memo. So bathing every day. Um, for us ladies, sometimes we like to use like a scented lotion after bathing, or we like to use some sort of scented oil. I can't myself because I have eczema and it's gotten worse as I've gotten older. I can't use any scent on my skin. Like it, it will just make my skin go crazy. I can't use scent on my skin. When I wear perfume, which is my favorite thing in the world, I put it on my clothes. I don't put it directly on my skin. The only exception is I have some body oil. I do have some like natural body oil that has a scent in it and I can use it on my skin. So thank goodness for that because I love scents. I love to smell good. I absolutely love it. And I am privy to like something that smells good. I have a strong sense of smell. So I like things that smell good. I like a good smelling man. Oh, it just, to some about that is very attractive. So you're, you're bathing, you're showering. Uh, if you're a lady, you might want to put on some scented body oil or lotion. If you're a gentleman, I would still say put lotion on your body. Gentlemen, I'm going to speak to this. Something about y'all's rough hands and your rough skin and your rough feet. Please take care of your skin. Please take have some sort of regimen for your skin. Have some sort of regimen for your face, for your beard, for your skin. Because the roughness of your of your skin, oh, Lord, mm, it just, ooh. okay, so I'm going to get back to that. But anyway, everybody should be bathing. Everybody should be taking good care of their skin. Everybody should be using some form of deodorant or antiperspirant under their arms. Um, they even make an all-body deodorant now. My daughter uses it, and you can use it in other places to deodorize your body. So, I, you know, check that out. <laughs> like, you need to put deodorant in places that tend to, you know, be smelly, right? You want to make sure. So here's what my grandmother always told me. Anita, when you leave the house, people should smell sweet or they should smell nothing. Okay, that's what I was told. S sweet smelling or nothing. Okay, anything else is unacceptable. Okay, so that that's some old school Ava Gill wisdom right there. Okay, that's that's a hundred years of of Gill wisdom <laughs> wrapped up in that statement. They should smell something good or smell nothing. Okay, so and and you know what? For those who don't have a strong sense of smell, because I think that's some of it. There are other people that smell bad and they can't smell themselves. Or maybe they used to smelling that smell. But for people like me who have a very strong sense of smell, oh, I can smell myself. <laughs> I can smell myself. I can smell other people. I can smell clear across, you know, clear across the room. I have a very sensitive uh, smell. And so, you know, ask somebody. You know, if you feel like you're one of those people that don't have a good strong sense of smell, ask someone. Hey, you know. The sniff check. Can you, you know, make sure I smell good or I smell like nothing? <laughs> like that's it. That's it. Let me give you a few tips internally because some of this is related to diet. And if you've ever dated anyone who was Asian or Indian or from a culture where the spices and the and the way they cook their food and the, the spices they use on their food, that has a bit that plays a big part too. So People will have a strong smell based on what they're eating. 
they will have a strong smell based on what they're drinking. And so here's one of my little tips. And if you're a man or a woman, you can use this little tip because it works fabulously. I have lemons and limes in my water every single day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Every single day, lemons and limes in my water. It is this. OK, and there's also a strawberry lemon infuser in this. So there's there's some things in this. Guess what else is in this? Liquid chlorophyll. That's the magic. OK, liquid chlorophyll and lemons and limes. That's the magic. That's the internal deodorizer. OK, so if you one of these people that like to eat incredibly spicy food or, you know, curry or, you know, just these. These these uh, seasonings that, you know, can be strong, can be smelly water and that water should have lemons and limes in it. That water should have liquid chlorophyll in it. That is the key. That's my secret ingredient to having everything smell good. Okay? Uh, liquid chlorophyll. And it's just good for your organs and your system and all that good stuff. But men, women, you can both use this little trick. Please drink water. Please keep your body hydrated. And please make sure there is lemon, lime, or liquid chlorophyll in that water. But drinking water, you know, I'm drinking 64 ounces of water a day. That'll do the trick. Uh, what's your background that qualifies you to give out this advice? I've lived 55 years, and these are the things that have worked for me. The end. That's my qualification. Take it or leave it. So let me put the disclaimer on it. I am not a medical doctor, and this is not medical advice. And if you take this advice, you are doing so under your own will and presupposition. Okay, there we go. So 55 years old, this is what works for me. I've never had anybody say my cooch smells. I've never had anybody say my body smells, my underarm smell. That's what qualifies me. Moving on. So ladies, for those of you because, you know, we have internal stuff going on. We got stuff going on. And so we have to be aware of that. Like, we cannot act like, you know, we have our internal stuff going on, okay? And we have to, to move in such a way so that we are monitoring that. One of the things that I think is so interesting is, um, <laughs> can I smell you to check? Okay, I wish you could because I'm smelling great right now. I wish you could. But one of the things that I have some women push back on, and I'm sorry, I'm a woman. So that, that ain't that ain't gonna fly with me. They like to push back on the idea that, oh, you know, uh, it's vagina, it's gonna smell bad, or it's gonna smell blah, 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 blah. No, 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 don't do that. <laughs> like, don't do that. Don't do that. Mm -mm. It can smell sweet. It can smell savory you know it can it can have a fishy smell like there is lots of smells okay and i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go here and say it should smell you should smell nothing but you should not smell bad okay remember the, the earlier you should not smell bad you should not smell strong and pungent that no because if you're taking these tips that I'm giving you, if you're drinking plenty of water, if you're having lemon and lime in the water, if you're putting chlorophyll in the water, here's another little tip, ladies. If you're using boric acid suppositories, so you can use a boric acid suppository once or twice a week, once a week, every week, that's going to keep your pH levels in check. That's going to make sure you're not getting yeast infections or bacterial vaginosis or any of those things. If you're a woman on here, you know what I'm talking about. So for the men who are like, what is she talking about? <laughs> but ladies, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh, the queen of cascade. No one should smell you after you use the restroom, male or female. 100%. 100%. Okay. So check yourself. But ladies... Gentle washing with a gentle soap and, and rinsing uh, boric acid suppositories. I do not, you know, recommend that women douche. I just recommend that once or twice a week you use a boric acid suppository at night and you wear a panty liner and get up in the morning and you take a shower and voila. Your diet is crucial. Y'all not going to like this because I didn't like it when I heard it from a professional, but I found out I was eating too much sugar. 
And all that sugar, all that carbs, that's what was causing all the, the, the pH to be off and the yeast. See, the yeast feeds on sugar. So some of this could be your diet. You got to check your diet. Okay, K Jackson A63, hygiene is automatic every day. You shouldn't have to tell grown people hygiene is important. I can smell you through the video, Anita. You look like you smell romantic. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but isn't it sad? It's sad that, yes, I've had to tell grown people. I've had to teach grown people how to wash. I've had to tell grown men to take a washcloth and soap and wash between their butt cheeks. Okay, like I'm going to play mama right now. I'm going to play auntie right now. Wash between your butt cheeks. Wash under your ball sack. Yeah, I've had to tell people that. And definitely, if intimacy is going to occur, get right. Don't just come in the house and it's like, oh, my wife ready to give me some or my husband. No, you, you self-check because I know I do. I've been gone out in the street all day. And, and I'm going to come home and, no, let uh, hey, I just need a few minutes. <laughs> I just need a few seconds. Like, check yourself. Check yourself. Hooray, you're about to get some. That's amazing. But don't go in there after being out all day. No, check yourself. Go slip into the bathroom for five or ten minutes and check yourself. But a lot of people have been telling me this. Like, oh, my gosh, you know, personal hygiene is an issue. Men and women. And y'all, we got to do better. We got to do better. Now, come on. I want you to get some. I want you to get laid, but don't nobody want to, you know, be with you if you stinky and smelly and uh, things just are pungent. Mm -hmm. No, no. I usually bathe in Lysol and it works well. No, please don't bathe in Lysol. Please don't. You're going to burn off all your parts. Mm -mm. So, yes, I wash my butt at least once a month. I don't, I don't know. I don't even know what to say to that. I do not. But y'all, please, you know, it's it's an external system. It's an internal system. Like, treat all of that. I do. I treat all of that. Pineapple is my favorite fruit. And so I try to have it once or twice a week. It is usually fresh pineapple. But every now and again, I'll have canned pineapple. Uh, she said, some of the pics I see on dating profile, the men look like they don't bathe. Yeah, that's disgusting. That is disgusting. I can't even imagine. I can't even imagine. So, yes. You know, I love a, a good smelling man. I love a hygienic man. I love everything to be right and tight. I love his facial hair to be right and tight. I love his skin, um, his hair. Oh, my gosh. I'm a sucker for a man with a nice head of hair. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> I just love a man's hair. I do. I am a sucker for a man's hair. Uh, but I want it to, you know, feel good, smell good. I want him to smell good. Um, ooh, ooh, I mm. It's another thing. You might have to trim up, ladies and gentlemen. You might have to trim up down there because some of y'all got a whole lot going on in that nether region. You got a whole lot. People are searching through all kinds of hair to try to find what they're looking for. And this is for the men and the women. Trim up. Take care of that nether region. Make sure that region is well taken care of, okay? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. But yes, it's unfortunate that this has to be discussed, but that's what we're discussing. Because my poor client is like, yeah, I'm going to have to break up. And I'm like, no, you're going to have to have a hard conversation. And that conversation is going to be uncomfortable for you. It's going to be uncomfortable for him, but you have to do it. Let me tell you another one of my pet peeves, nails. Bruz, clip your nails. Not just clip them, file them. Right. Because once you this is what men don't understand, once you clip your nails short, there's these little sharp edges on them. And you're not putting your hands on me, in me, up me. No, no, no. There's these little sharp edges on your nails that here you come and you want to put your hands on me and you want to try to put your hands up me. No, no. <laughs> like clip them, file them. There's nothing wrong with a man going and getting a manicure. You don't have to get any polish on it, but they're going to hook you up. There's nothing wrong with a man getting a pedicure. They're going to hook your feet up. But take good care of yourself. It makes all the difference. It makes all the difference. After doing a number two, I always clean myself back in front. Good. <laughs> That's right. Please. Please, for the sake of whoever you're dating or in a relationship with or married to, think about them. 
Okay. And, you know, there's a saying back in the 80s and the 90s, we used to say, oh, I want somebody to just love me and my dirty drawers. I want somebody to just drink my dirty bath water. Okay. That's just a saying. Okay. That's just a saying that we used to say. No, nobody wants to love your dirty drawers. Nobody wants to drink your dirty bath water. Okay. So please, please take care of your personal hygiene. It is that important. Okay. Um, I'm heading in here to see my client. I hope you all have a great day. Okay. It's windy outside, y'all. Um, oh, yeah. People who are on the agreeable end of the spectrum who have a very hard time having hard convos. Yeah. But you got to get over it. We got to we gotta have hard conversations. You do. That's what makes the relationship easy. You got to let it out because all that's going to happen is you keep it in. And you're all messed up inside. And then eventually people can tell you're all messed up inside. They're like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? So just say it. Like, I don't know why we have to do that. Thank you so much, LeVar. You have a great day, too. Thank you for joining me on this live. Um, yes, it's unfortunate that we have to have it, that adult people don't understand this. But you know what? Maybe, you know, you didn't have mom. You didn't have dad. You didn't have auntie or uncle. You didn't have grandma or grandpa. So I had to play that role today. Okay? I had to play. I had to give you some tips and some tools to make sure your personal hygiene is straight. Okay. All right. Have a great day. Thank you so much for joining. And as always, stay open to love.